My interest in architecture and in, in old buildings started with my course in architecture at Melbourne University. Although I'd grown up in Ballarat, I'm rather ashamed to say that I was completely oblivious to the presence of old buildings in Ballarat until I had spent my first year in architecture. I went home, got off the train and said to my parents, where did all these old buildings come from? And um, I was led towards an interest in these old buildings, primarily by George Tibbetts and Miles Lewis and within the architecture faculty. And they were both um, inspirational lectures and, and very uh, wonderful mentors to people interested in Australian architecture and in, in um, heritage matters. The main focus, uh, I suppose, for most architecture students at the time in terms of learning about uh, such things was through the specific course in Australian architecture. But then there were a series of other courses offered in more specific heritage studies um, in relation to individual buildings or in relation to municipalities and so forth. And I was taken through those with by Miles and George and uh, that really got me interested in the whole thing. Uh, uh, slightly left of centre was that my interest in history was um, uh, expanded and complemented at that time by uh, my undertaking a, 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 a parallel course in classics and fine arts at the same time as my architecture degree. So there was a kind of um, a, a great intersection of interests. At the end of my degrees, I commenced a, a, a master's by thesis in architecture uh, focused on interwar residential architecture and also started lecturing in and tutoring in architectural history within the faculty. It's um, of interest having heard Peter talking about the evolution of practice and the evolution of ideas about heritage um, to think about this now, because at the time that I wrote my thesis and, and started practicing, uh, the idea that interwar houses or post-war houses and or for that matter, many industrial buildings of the 20th century might be of heritage interest was still somewhat novel. And, uh, and of course now, you know, it's hard to even imagine that it could be the case, but that was certainly the case at that stage. And so while the focus of early heritage studies and early heritage controls had been almost exclusively on Edwardian and Victorian buildings, there was a growing awareness of the importance of our uh, of our interwar and post-war residential suburbs and of other kinds of, of, of architectural heritage, as well as uh, the various other things that Peter's alluded to. In terms of my professional development, a very important thing that happened at that time was that I um, became involved with the National Trust and became a member of the Trust's 20th Century Building Committee which set about uh, identifying and classifying buildings of the 20th century. And, uh, and Philip Goad, of course, was an important member of that committee at the same time. And that was a, a wonderful experience, a wonderful collegiate experience, the sort of thing that I'd recommend for any student or, uh, or uh, person who wishes to be active in, in heritage, to, in a sense, step outside the professional world of a you know, nine to five and do work on an honorary basis with enthusiastic people uh, discussing the latest ideas about what um, is, is important in the heritage world. And, and I certainly gained a lot out of that. It was a great boost to my experience and it also introduced me to a wide range of other heritage colleagues um, uh, in Victoria. At that time, I also wrote a technical bulletin for the National Trust on interwar houses and their conservation, and that was a sort of spin-off from my master's thesis. Uh, this in turn uh, led to an offer from Ray Tonkin for me to become, uh, Ray, oh, sorry, I should say Ray Tonkin was head of Heritage Victoria at that time, the executive director, and he uh, uh, asked me if I'd be interested in becoming a heritage advisor to a number of middle ring um, suburbs in Melbourne that had a good representation of interwar buildings as well as of course having Victorian and Edwardian buildings and so I became a heritage advisor to about six municipalities at that time under the aegis of Heritage Victoria initially 
uh, this was a sort of seeding program and it really kicked off um, the kind of rapid spread of heritage advisory services, which is now ubiquitous in, certainly in Victoria, uh, almost every council would have a heritage advisor on some sort of basis, advising its planning department on how to manage um, it, its heritage policy and the like. I continue in that kind of role today uh, as, as the heritage consultant for uh, the city of Stonington. About 1990, I started my own practice. I've been working part-time as well as teaching. And uh, for, I've been working for Tim Hubbard, a heritage architect who had formerly been at Heritage Victoria. Uh, with the crash around 1990, it was important to look at other alternatives. I started my own practice and, and I've basically been operating uh, on that basis since. Uh, it's a small practice, much smaller than Level Chen. At the moment, about 10 people within the practice. And uh, as with uh, a lot of Peter's work, the emphasis has been upon um, advising architects on how to respond to heritage built form, uh, whether buildings are registered under the Heritage Act or whether they're managed under um, the heritage overlay at a, at a local level. Uh, for about 10 years from the mid 90s, I was a member of the Historic Buildings Council, which subsequently became the Heritage Council. And that was another marvellous collegiate experience uh, in terms of uh, involvement with a group of people. It wasn't, uh, in a sense, a, an employed role, uh, although there was a small stipend. It was really something that was undertaken for the love of heritage and for the uh, participation within a group uh, to actively promote and protect heritage. And uh, it also enabled me to get to know the staff at Heritage Victoria at that time very, very well. And that was a, a great boost to my um, uh, practice. Uh, today, my practice is largely based around consulting work, preparation of reports in relation to planning applications and Heritage Victoria permit applications, preparation of conservation management plans and the like. We advise architects and owners on appropriate works in heritage contexts and we document conservation interventions to heritage buildings. I also provide expert witness to VCAT and before the Heritage Council on a, a regular basis. Um, as I think Peter has suggested in his own practice, um, an aspect of work that I particularly enjoy is the interaction with many of the fine architects in Victoria um, and trying to help them navigate the difficulties of achieving appropriate outcomes in a heritage context while also realising good design. And I think that's um, a wonderful, uh, creative and conservative experience. Uh, 